and try this. Oh, my gosh. What did God put us here for? So what are we, what are we supposed to be doing in this life? So if you will, do me a favor. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Let's start with 19 and see how that works. Let's go back to, let's go to 18, actually. Jesus talking uh, to his disciples. Now, when I talk about Jesus' disciples, uh, I'm not talking about the uh, people in the book so much. I'm talking about Jesus' disciples, and that's you. It's somebody that spreads the word of God. So Jesus speaking here, he says, Jesus came to the disciples, who is you. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You need to kind of pay attention to this next part. It says, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I love this next part, and I just, and it's like whenever and you're in the valley, he says, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of age. So God is with us until the end of age, no matter what. God also gave us some rules to live by. I hate it when you have to have rules, but you know, God gave us some rules. So let's go over to Exodus, if you don't mind. But you know what? These ain't bad rules. There's not, nothing wrong with these rules here. This, and you know what? They're not the easiest rules to follow sometimes with our carnal mind and our, our trash mouth or anything like that. But <laughs> let's start off in verse 3. We're in Exodus chapter 20. Did I not give you that? I'm sorry. I'm good at that stuff. I just, I don't tell you. I've got my little, it's on marker number two in your Bible. Find that marker number two and you got this. Exodus chapter 20, starting in verse three. He says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in, in heaven Above the earth, above or on the earth, beneath you, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who punishes the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But show love, but showing love to thousands of generations to those who love me. And keep my commands. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? For those who love me and keep my commands. And here's the other thing it says right here. It says, you shall not misuse the name of your God for the Lord. And I got to tell you, uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is to go anywhere and somebody's using the God uh, thing in, in vain. And it just, it almost just makes me want to slap them. And I can tell you, uh, uh, at the big church when I was there, uh, we had a gentleman there that he was there every Sunday. He was there every Sunday. And he wanted to go dove hunting. And he says, you got any place to go dove hunting? And I said, sure, come on out. You'd be welcome to come out on my place and go dove hunting. And friend, he would make your ears curl with the God name. And all the other stuff that he said, and he was so, I, I can't tell you how bad it was, but I'm going to tell you something. He called me again this year, wanting to know if he'd come hunting. And I said, no, sir, sorry, I, I can't let anybody come. I just, I just can't do it, and I won't do it. I, I will not put up with it. It's not going to happen on my watch. He also says on verse 8, he says, remember the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. He says, six days shall you labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath. To the Lord your God, on it whom you shall, on it you shall not do any work, neither you, your son, or your daughter, or your maidservant, 
nor your animals, nor the aliens within your gates. For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and then he rested. On the seventh day, therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Children, older people, anybody within earshot that have parents, listen to this part right here. It says, honor your father and mother because they brought you into this world and they can take you out. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. I'm sorry. Let me go back. It says, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long. Did I not say it right the first time? You can live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. And then he says, don't you murder. You shall not commit adultery. One of my biggest pet peeves. You should not steal. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. I got to tell you and, you, and you think, okay, my neighbor just lives next door. No, that's not what Jesus is saying. Anybody that you come in contact with is your neighbor. Anybody. And he's saying, don't give false testimony about that. And it says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife or his maidservant or his manservant or his donkey or his bass boat <laughs> or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. He says, don't cover it. So if you look at what God does for us daily, the thousands of things, you think only God, you know, a lot of, here, a lot of people say, I, I'm breathing this morning. That's, that's what God did for me. No. God's got you up and running. Your heart's beating. You're breathing. It's a beautiful day outside. He does thousands of things for you every day, but we take them for granted. So come on, people. Let's look at the Lord and just be thankful of what he actually gives us. Now, that's kind of how God lined us out to uh, witness to people to honor these rules that he gave us. But there's a problem. There is a problem. And that problem is found in 1 Peter 5, 8. It's tab number 3, if you can't find it. It's close to the back of your Bible, I'm sorry. It's close to the back of the Bible. 1 Peter, we're going to be in chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 8. Let's go back. Let's just go ahead and kind of back up just a little bit, and we'll go to 6 just a little bit because I love the part that leads into this. 1 Peter chapter 5, we're going to verse 6. I'm going to back up even a little bit further because I like that better because I got it all underlined. I keep thinking, why do you underline all this stuff? <laughs> Here we go. I got this. He says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. He says, humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your, your anxieties on him because he cares for you. He says, be self-controlled and alert because here's where the problem lies. He says, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And he says, resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So i got to ask you, where does Satan live? Where does he live in your life? Well, we could all, a lot of times we could say, well, he's in the leaders of our country. And I'm not trying to make this political. This is not a political sermon. This is just where Satan lives in this world today. And I'm going to tell you something, this world's in the middle of a hess. Um, but he also lives in people. He might even live in your boss. I don't know if you work and if you're retired like me, I've only got one boss and she's right over here. So I'm doing good. Uh, but it could be your boss that's, uh, you know, you think Satan lives through you, through him. Not, him, not you, but through him. Also, Satan lives in things. Satan knows how to push your button. 
and you know your buttons. You should know your buttons because there's some things that just really make the hair stand up on my neck. You should know what those buttons are. One of my biggest and worst buttons that I have in my life is a late model case tractor. If you own a case tractor and it's a late model, my condolences. This tractor has pushed my buttons more than once. Nick, I'm not doing wherever Nick is. Nick, I hope you enjoy your tractor. I'm just saying because it's a John Deere. I'm just in this. Hey, John Deere paid me to do this. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, the case, I got a case tractor. This tractor, I'm serious. I carry it to Stephenville to get it repaired because there's no case dealership really close enough to that has anybody know what they're doing. So we haul that thing, and we're going to be hauling that thing tomorrow. And you notice I call it the thing. Um, it's a great tractor. It is a great tractor when it works. But when you really need this flipping tractor, <laughs> when you really need this tractor, Every alarm in that tractor goes off, and then it just goes to idle, and it will not do another thing for you. It is, says, I'm in the limp mode. I am not doing nothing for you today. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We was out moving hay, Brent. I, me and you was out moving hay, I think. Was it last week? I think it was last week. I can't remember. We was out moving hay. Of course, Brent gets the brunt of all my stuff. He helps me all the time. And, and uh, we was out moving hay, and all of a sudden, we was driving this tractor. And it, it's probably been 10 hours since I brought it back from Stephenville the last time. And it cost $100 to take it to Stephenville and come back and then go back and get it again. It's another $100 just for fuel. And I can't tell you what the repairs cost on this tractor, and that don't make any difference. But... We was out moving hay, and we got the first uh, few rows loaded and was going to the next field, and then all of a sudden, all the bells and whistles go off in this tractor, and it went to the lip mode, and so we're not moving any more hay at that point, and we're running it to idle, and she's just in, and those alarms in that tractor are so loud, and they're just screaming at you, I just want to take a sledgehammer and beat the, mm. I called that tractor, I can tell you, I called that tractor, a piece of crap, but I put an S in front of a lot of that stuff there, so you can kind of figure it out from there. And I used I used some words that I, I'm not supposed to use. The good thing about that with the tractor is I don't have to ask the tractor for a, a for an, I apologize to it. I just got to ask God for forgiveness because man, I'm gonna tell you that tractor blows me away. So. What I'm going to tell you about this tractor, and you listen to this part very well. So there's things that push your buttons. Then two. There's just, there's some things that really set you off. I'm going to sell this tractor, and I will not sell it to you. You you would hate me for the rest of your life, and I will not sell it to you. But the minute the TURP program, this is a $150,000 tractor. The minute the TURP program runs out on this tractor, which should be this year, I am going to put it on Tractor Trader, whatever else. And if somebody calls me and asks me how this tractor is running, I'm going to tell him right now it's running really good. And that's about as far as I want to carry that. But if Satan can use this tractor to push my buttons, and he does it over and over and over, and I am so sick of this tractor, I need to make a change. What do you think about that? Let's just make a change. Let's get rid of this piece of good stuff and sell it to somebody else. Let's get rid of it and change to something that will work for me and stop pushing my buttons. And why did I tell you this story? Why did I tell you this? Because when you leave here today, you may go to some of your friends or somebody else's house where they, lead, they try to drag you down in the ditch with them with their language, with the way they treat life and stuff like that. And what I'm telling you is, if that's the case with your life, you need to make a change. You need to change your friends. And if it's your family, if it's somebody in your family, you really need to tell them what you're doing is not godly. That's all I can tell you. Just, you know, and if, you, if you're stuck with it, you're stuck with it. But I can make a change, and I'm hoping that you can make a change of what you're, what you're doing. And so I wish I, Steve Alucci was here because he would be so impressed 
when I do that because I drop the rope. And what that tells you right there is I'm not a roper. I couldn't rope a cow, if I might, especially off of a horse. I, I couldn't rope a cow if I had to. So let's just go there. Let me, kind of, let me load this thing out here. It's a rope. All right. So what I'm going to tell you about this morning is when you leave here today, this is Sunday. Uh, hey, tell me what the name of that card game is. There's a card game that you play, and, and you finally you, you got all this money stacked in front of you, and you kind of shove it all out there, and you say, I'm all in. What is that? What card game? Poker? Texas Hold'em. Tommy's got this. Tommy, you ever played that before? No, I don't even want to. No, don't answer that. No, don't do that. So, what I'm going to encourage you to do is try to get all in, okay? Getting all in is pretty easy on Sunday, so today's Sunday. God, I'm all in. I'm yours today. I'm going to do whatever you want to, and whatever you leave me to do, today's Sunday. And I'm not going to work either. I didn't say it very loud, Dad Sugar. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to observe this. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. I'm terrible. Um. But I'm going I'm to observe the Sabbath, and today, if you, want, if you come up to me and say, how you doing, Buster? I'm doing so good. Everything is just so lovely. My wife, my wife loves me, and all my friends, everything's so great, okay? All right, let's get past Sunday, and let's go to Monday. So we're going to open that up a little bit more. So now, we're going to go to Monday, and i got to go to work. So Monday, I go to work, and I'm going to get in my little circle again, and i just been to church, and Buster, uh, God shared with me uh, that uh, I need to be nice today and, sh and let my light shine today and be the Christian that I'm supposed to be, and everything's going to be good. And then all of a sudden, you've got somebody that walks up to you and really ticks you off. Now, but you've just been to church, and Buster just preached about the Ten Commandments, so you're going to be okay with this. So you're biting your tongue, and you're not saying anything. You make it through Monday. That's awesome. You got through Monday. All right, let's go, let's go to Tuesday. All right, so there's Tuesday. So I'm still all in, okay? Everybody all in with me so far? All right, we're all in. So Tuesday comes around, and your boss comes up, Clint. Your boss, <laughs> your boss comes up and tells you that you're going to do something different, and you don't want to do something different. And all of a sudden, you step out of that circle, and your give-a-damn is busted. And all hell breaks loose from that mouth, from your mind, from your heart. So, okay. So now we got, we made it to Tuesday. Now, it's, it's been tough already. So what I'm going to encourage you to do, I had not got a lot of more analogies, but I'm going to draw me a circle up here. I'm hoping I can get this thing to spread out. All right, let me kick it around a little bit. Uh, all right. There we go. I like that. This is my week coming up. I'm going to carry my tractor to the dealership, and they're going to fix it and charge me a fortune, and that's okay. We're going to get past that. So this whole week uh, that's coming up this week is you're going to be tested Satan is going to jump on you. He's going to push some buttons on you. And you got to learn how to change the things that are going on to you this week. Think about it. Think about it. You need to change some things in your life. And it may be just change your language. Here's the other thing, too. You can love your boss. You really can. It's okay to love your boss. But you don't have to like what he does. You really don't. You do not have to like what your boss tells you to do. You may need to do it so you don't get fired. And if that goes on enough in your life at your job, maybe you need to start putting in an ad for a new job or looking at the ads for new jobs, okay? But what I want to say to you this is Blake Shelton does a song, and I like this song a lot. It says, who are you when I'm not looking? So who are you? When you go to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, who are you when there's no Christian family around you? Now, God's always looking. Just, just know if, you, if, you're, if you're a child of God, God's got you, and I'm sorry, you can't fool him. You can't. You can't. 
you can always ask for forgiveness, though. I can tell you that because I had to ask for forgiveness. But who are you when no one's looking? So I'm trying to encourage you this week coming up and, and just, just to get in the circle and be all in. Jesus wants us to be all in seven days a week, 24-7, and to do that. And it's not easy. Because if, if you decide to make that decision today that I'm all in, Satan is going to hate you tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Get ready. He's coming. He is ro he's prowling around like a roaring lion, and he is not bashful, but I'm not bashful either. There's somebody who told me this morning, get behind me, Satan. You sorry dog. Get away from me. All right. Now, we're going to go one more place here for just a little bit, and that's Matthew 13. And that would be number four. Matthew 13, this is a parable about the seeds. Now, a lot of times, I had to study this a little bit because I don't think like the Bible thinks a lot of times. I have to think it in Buster's terms now, day, and time. So this farmer, he goes out and sows seed. And this is what he's telling the parable here is about sowing seeds. Sowing seeds is, is, is having Jesus in your life. And wherever you are, I got to take my flashlight here. Jason, I'm going to use you, buddy. You ready? You got this? All right, here we go. All right, Jason. I'm going to tell you about Jesus, and you're going to sit there and listen, and you better pay attention, okay? Now, I can tell you, Jason is not going to want a part of that. He is not. But what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to turn this upside down so it might step and it might not. So it's, it's just a small little candle. If you would, let's just do that. It's going to fall. I know it is. Don't pay attention to the candle, but it's just a small light. There's different magnitudes of a candle. But this is a light in your life that if you will keep the light on, where when people look at you and people work with you, and you have a constant light to where you don't turn the light off and go your way and get your tongue going, but when you keep a constant light and encourage people and that type of stuff, that's, the, that's what wins people to Jesus Christ is a constant light. Just being that way all the time, 24-7, every day of the week, you're solid. Your light's on. You never turn it off. You don't leave the house in the morning and say, God, you're staying here today while I go to work because you're not going to like what's going to happen today. You don't do that. You say, God, come on, let's go. We got things to do today, and I want to be a light that shines for you. So you And God says, if you don't know what to say, if you'll just sit back and relax and, and look at him, he says, I will give you what you need to say. Now, the hardest thing about talking to people about Jesus Christ is just saying this one word, Jesus. When you first say Jesus, I want to tell you about Jesus, whatever. Once you say Jesus, the rest of it flows. Just take my word for it because I used to have a tough time trying to witness to people, but I, I got it, and this cord is okay. Parable of the seeds. Anyway, we're going to the seeds, okay? So this farmer went out and he sows his seeds. This is on chapter 13. We're going to start off a little bit after verse 3. It says, the farmer went out to sow his seeds. As he was scattering the seeds, some fellow... Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. So what that tells you right there is, now I'm going to tell you, I don't care where you at, what you do, what to, how you live your life, but if you're sharing, if you're letting your light shine for Jesus Christ, you may not see, you may not get to see the words you spoke make a difference in that person's life because you don't know where they went or what they did, but you may have made a change in that person's life. You don't always get to see them sprout. But on this particular one, it says he fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. So what this t is telling you, I shared, I, I was a light for you, God, and I was sharing Jesus, and they didn't want to have nothing to do with it, and they just kept walking. And I'm not one of those pastors that get out on the street corner and I start screaming at people and tell them what Jesus is doing for me. I don't do that. 
I just, I let God, I, no, I, let me just say this. I try to let Jesus just live through my life every day, 24-7. But I want to be solid. I want to be the same person that you see here today. If you call me Sunday, if you call me Wednesday, I want to be that same person, that light that shines in the darkness all the time, 24-7. I want to be that person. And then, let's go here. It says, some fell around the rocky paces, and it didn't have much soil, so it sprang up. Listen to this. That, the, whatever that seed planted, it sprang up, and the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. All right? And I'm going to use a good example uh, of this. Probably three months ago, two months ago, there was a young man that was here. He invited, we went back there in that room. He invited Jesus into his heart. We baptized him that same day. I have not seen him since. So I had to, so I had to check up on him to find out what's going on. So I asked his friend, I said, where's he at? I hadn't seen him since we baptized him. What's going on with him? Listen to this. This is a great one right here. He's got a girlfriend now. Really? Really, he's got a girlfriend. Do me a favor. If you've got a girlfriend, you can't come to church, get rid of her. But if you've got a girlfriend, bring her to church with you. Amen? I'm talking to you, brother. You, got, you see me. I've got your hands here. <laughs> bring your girlfriend with you. Absolutely. Don't let somebody keep you from coming to church. Okay? Just get all in on this thing. Going to verse 7, it says, some seeds fell among the thorn. I'm sorry, going to verse 8. He said, still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred sixty times of what was sown. So what I'm going to tell you about that verse right there is, there's several people in this church building today that just this year, and, and years past, but just this year came in that was broken. And they accepted Jesus. They got their lives right with God. And you, if you hear me speaking to you, <laughs> I'm not going to call you by name. But there's a lot of people in here that Jesus made a change in their life. And they're here. So they're, they're on solid ground. They're in fertile soil. And we're watering that soil every week. And they're trying to water their soil by reading the Bible every Sunday morning. Every morning. Let's just go there every morning. Trying to get... Uh, God's word into their heart and just fulfill it. But they're making a difference in this world. They're making a difference in the way they feel every morning when they get up. They're not ba humbug. Now, if you're one of those ba humbug people and you're trying to witness somebody and you go to them and you say, my cat died this morning and, uh, you know, I, I feel so bad, but Jesus has got me, I think, and I don't know what I, I just, and I just, you know, you need to have Jesus in your life and, uh, you know, cause he'll, he'll treat you the same. My cat died and he'll treat you just like he treats me. Your cat will die too. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> That's not how you witness. It is not. <laughs> it's not how you witness. You go to him and you cut and let me tell you something. You get the Terry Stewart out. Pull that tear through the straw out and get, get happy with them. But also don't, don't take your flashlight and just point in their face and tell them you need to make a change. That is not how you do it. Be that. Whatever your personality is, smile. Let God shine through you. Be that light that shines in darkness. Now, I'm going to give you some things to go by here just for a little bit. In Luke 4, 24, you don't have to turn there. This is quick. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. What that, what's that telling you is it is hard to witness to somebody that knew you all your life and what you were before. It's hard to witness to them. It's hard to witness to a family member that has known you and they don't want, they want to drink and carouse and enjoy life and God doesn't need to be a part of them. And I've heard, I've witnessed so many people say, 
I'm not ready to do that because I still got a lot of living to do. Let me tell you something. You cannot be any happier than I am, and you cannot live happier than I do. I just enjoy life, and I know God has got me. Just get happy with it. Amen. And then the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 19, he says, As water reflects a face, it says, So a, a man's heart reflects the man. Whatever's in, so, do you have a kind heart or do you have a mean heart? I tell people all the time. I seen somebody this morning with beautiful blue eyes, and I just told them. I said, "Let me tell you something. I know you got a beautiful heart because the Bible says your eyes are the window of your heart. You can have mean eyes, and you can look, and you, and you know better than to speak to that person. But when you have soft, pleasant eyes and a smile on your face, people all, all of a sudden get to see you." As somebody that's got a lot of love built into them somehow. Let that love shine. Let it shine. Proverbs 27, 17, he says, As iron sharpens iron, so when one man sharpens another. And that's what we're doing here today. I want to sharpen you. I've got my knife sharpened around, and it's right here. I want to sharpen you up and get you ready for the week. Let you just let you go out there and be what God. Let me tell you something. If you think that you really don't have anything to give God, you've got another thing coming. Because God is going, if you allow, if you will give God your life, okay, take all your stuff, shove it in the center of this circle and say, God, I'm all in today. And just, and, and you got to do that every day, by the way. You, if you're going to just tell God you're all in, he will figure out a way to use your life to either witness to somebody or to comfort somebody through time. I was with a gentleman last night who uh, played the drums, and uh, his father just passed away. But his father was a Christian man, and he was, and he was just, he knew that he was going to see his father again. So it wasn't a sad time. He wanted a great service. Vicky's going to sing at, at, his, at his service. And he, he just wants a happy, uplifted service because his father, his father, was that man that I'm talking about. Somebody that gave it all to God. Let's go to Matthew 5, 13. We're going to close here. And after this, we're going to, I want you to stay put long enough to watch a video that Ron's going to show us just for a second. And this is so impor important that you stay put. All right. Let's go to uh, Matthew 5, 13. And I didn't put a marker on that, but I can find it. That should have been marker number five. All right. Reggie, I think, preached on this last Sunday. And I just, I just want to tell you, if you need to be salted, get your Bible out and get your salt every morning. Salt up. Okay? He says, if you're there, is everybody there? 518. I'm sorry. That's right. 513. Let's go there. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Being made salty again sometimes just comes with repentance, saying, Father God, I have really, and I've seen this happen in more people than a lot of people where they say, God, I've really made a screwed up mess of my life, but I need to be salty again. I need to give my life and start all over. And that is possible. In God's kingdom. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. But listen to this. He says, you are the light of the world. And a city on, and a, city on a hill cannot be hidden. So if your light is shining every day, you can't hide. They will see that. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a lampstand, and my lampstand's a little crooked, and gives light to everyone in the house. Listen to this. In the same way, let your, shot, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise. Listen to this. They're not going to praise you. I don't want them to praise me. That they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. So just let your light shine. Let God shine through you with your heart, with your eyes, with your mouth, sometimes with your arms. Sometimes somebody just needs a hug.
sometimes. Sometimes. Maybe all they need is for you to put your arm around them and cry with them. That's all you got to do. I'm pretty good at that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, again, we just come to you this morning just thanking you for the day. And uh, Father God, I just pray that this message somehow just reached down in somebody's life so they would just say, I'm all in today, and I'm going to be all in from now on. I've got to tell you, though, uh, congregation, if you don't know Jesus and if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you're not going to be able to get all in. But let me help you. If you haven't ever invited Jesus into your heart, I'm going to ask you to pray with me this prayer. You can just you can shout it to the rooftops. You can pray it silently. You can pray it out loud. You can raise your hands up and just let God just bless your life. So pray this prayer with me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner and I have made a mess of my life and I really need to make a change and I'm ready to make that change. I also know, Father God, that you died for my sins and that you are alive today. Thank you, Jesus. And Father God, today, this morning, right now, right here where I'm standing, right where I'm at, I want to invite you into my life to make a change. I invite you into my heart to make a difference. I invite you into my heart so I, you've always got me in the palm of your hands. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to Jesus Christ and JBRC. Amen.